Hello and welcome to my Minecraft Let's Play Part 24. So, a couple new things have happened. Um, the Doggy Talents mod has updated to 0 0.5.0. And now oh. when you right click again with a stick, it will bring up this better uh, graphical user interface that will list all the skills and their uh, associated items. And the levels, of course. Um, it visually conflicts with uh, Zombies Mod Pack, specifically the World Information Mod, but that's just... that'll get fixed eventually. The um, new skills included with the update are Doggy Dash, Fisher Dog, and Pack Puppy, um, which I won't be getting for a while because the um, new item required, because it no longer takes bones to... Um, level the skills now it takes training treats and this is the recipe for them and I can farm everything on this recipe except for the gunpowder which means that I won't be able to build up the massive amount of training treats I need to level the skills for quite some time um, it also has this nice a uh, ability of changing the name much easier and I got a really good suggestion for a funny name, so I'm changing his name to somebody. I thought that was really kind of funny, actually. Uh, Alright, so that's that. Then over here, this is Rusugami's Armor Stand mod. Um, it's crafted with uh, three stone blocks and two sticks. Makes an armor stand. And I uh, acquired another nano suit to um, put in its slots. This is just for display and uh, to look cool. So I like that. I can still access my little water spring behind that, so that's also very cool. You can change it. If you have this is a toggle, if we have it on, it will always follow you. Kind of creepy. Um, and then you've got different options. You have nothing. You can just have a black skin, which is my skin. You can have it look like a zombie, which again you can't really see because it's the nano suit and all that. Um, player, it looks just like the player, which again is the same as black because my skin is just all black. And then char, it looks like the default Steve look. So that's kind of cool. One thing I forgot on the doggy talents mod in the 0 0.5.0 update, these things called emblems were created and they're made of the same as the watch but with different cores instead of the redstone um there's five of them attack sick stay okay and checkup time and what they do is checkup time makes all nearby dogs sit if they're injured but stand if they're at full health which lets you see which ones need healing okay makes all nearby dogs stand Stay makes all nearby dogs sit. Sick makes all dogs with at least level 300 dog auto aggro the nearest pig, chicken, or cow. Attack makes all dogs with at least level 3 black pelt attack the nearest skeleton, zombie, or spider. And so that's very useful. Um, everything else in the mod has stayed the same. Um, so that's all I had to say about that. I picked up a new mod, the Control Pack mod. It adds a whole list of really cool features. So I'm just going to run down these real quick. It better third person view. So if you go into F5, you get the standard Minecraft view. Hit F5 again, and it locks the camera. And you can rotate your character around, which it works better if you take out the HUD. And uh, actually, hold on. Let me put my. There we go. So now I'm standing here looking all awesome. And the thing is, if you hold control and move the WASD keys, you can actually move the camera. So it's really for like um, making screenshots and stuff. So really cool. F5 again takes you back into normal view. Automatic window restoration. I can't demonstrate this, but what it does is when you open up Minecraft, after you click log in, it does its initial thinking, it will automatically maximize itself to whatever you had last set it as, which is very, very useful. Um, auto run. If you hold down R, 
if you actually if you tap R, you just run. I'm you can't see it, but I'm aside from view changes, I'm not touching my keyboard or mouse. Um, turn that off again with R. Toggle sneak, tap caps, and you hold sneak, which is very very useful, and it stands through inventory changing, which is very very good. Toggle jump. Uh, this uh, can't finish it here. There we go. This is best used um, in water. It will keep you at the surface of the water, which is useful. That's toggled with J. Um, swap left, swap right. That's where you can push and hold a button, and it will temporarily move your um, selection on your hotbar left or right one space as long as you hold it. It's for like if you're going through with your chainsaw, you can just switch over to your sword real quick. And I won't use that much simply because I'm good with my scroll wheel. Toggle mining. Button, there you go. Um, tap M, and you will continuously mine without having to hold down left click. Useful, I think. Um, run distance. You tap equals and type in a number, in this case, like 10, for example, and then hit go or enter, and you'll just run 10 blocks and then stop, which is quite useful. And look behind. Now, this is why I got the mod. If you hold down middle mouse, you look behind you while you're running. And if you don't have a middle mouse, you can hold S while you're running, you know, hold backwards while you're running forwards, and that does the same. And it is so cool. No more do you have to you try and spin around while running and jumping backwards to see if there's still a creeper behind you. And then it also adds a furnace tweak where you can just shift click stuff into the furnace and it will automatically go where it should go which I won't be using because it's just for those furnaces and I don't use those furnaces anymore. And then two rain thing control tweaks, which I don't care about. One tweaks the volume and one makes less rain fall. But I'm happy with rain as it is. Okay, so that was like a verbal wall of text, but... <laughs> Alright. So, on to the actual stuff for this part. Um... I've done a lot of cave exploring. It was rather boring, so I haven't bothered to record it, but I got a lot of resources. I got diamond, gold, and redstone, stuff like that. And um, I was thinking that it's high time I do some... get uh, build a diamond sword. I've never actually had a diamond sword before. I've always just... Um, may do with iron and stone swords simply because for me diamond has always been really really rare and so I've always wanted to conserve it for the stuff that you know we need diamonds but I have so much coal that which I only have I almost had enough coal to make an entire nano suit practically that I just decided that I should smelt up three of my stacks of coal, well not smelt, crush I guess, into diamonds so that I can um, build both a diamond sword, which will take two diamonds, and a cable obscurator, which is made with this recipe, advanced circuit, industrial diamond, and redstone and cabling. And if you might recall from a very long time ago, I have that advanced circuit from when I made my EC manipulator. So, to let that do its thing. While that's doing that thing, I'm going to grab this, some of the sand here. That's too many sacks, hold on. There we go. And get this sand smelting up. Because I'll need the glass for my underwater furnace. My underwater furnace? Wait, sorry. Underwater base. Because I came up with some neat ideas for that. So that's good. Put that there. That. Uh, also, you might notice this. This is just a little thing I just built because I noticed that I would be um, in my industrial craft room and coming up all this way, going around, and then going this way just to get over to these. So I dug this little through tunnel. So, if I'm just going to my tree farm, I can turn and go over here, or stuff like that. I'm not fully satisfied with how this turned out, um, but it's okay for now, so, I guess. 
I'm, I just think that it could be a little bit better, but I, Minecraft, I don't know how really to make it better. So it's okay for now. And then this chest is the one with the sand and the flint in it. So yeah. I, um... I think I'm going to, while that processes, which is going to take a while, I'm going to cut the video here, and when I come back, I will have nine or ten stack, yeah, ten stacks of glass, and a whole bunch of, um, oh yeah, diamonds. <laughs> yeah, I'll have my three diamonds, and I'll be able to make my first ever diamond sword. See you then. Okay, welcome back. So, I've jumped ahead, and as you can see, this uh, my iron finished macerating, and I'm macerating the last of my iron ore now. And the uh, I finished the second phase of the diamond making, which is after you get the coal dust, you combine it with flint to make coal balls, which you then compress to make compressed coal balls. Then what you do is run up here and grab some obsidian, and it's actually been a lot faster, because I don't know if you remember, when I made my nano suit, it took me all day, because I only had one of each machine. With all these machines, it's gone a lot faster. So you take, put the obsidian in the middle, and then you, uh, like that, like that, and you get the cold chunks, which this actually works out really well. Put one cold chunk in each compressor, and then coal chunks compress into industrial diamonds. Let's see, this is coming along quite nicely. And the um, glass, the first five stacks of glass, or sand, I mean, finished being smelted into glass, and I've got the next five stacks almost done smelting. Oh good, this is done. And now, take out my portable workbench, diamonds there, stick there, makes my first ever diamond sword. Yes. Alright, that's really, really cool. Now, for the cable obscurator, I need five redstone, two cables. So let's come over here, I pull out two cables, five redstone. Redstone there, 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 diamond there, cable. Uh -huh. Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> try this again. Cables there, advanced circuit there, diamond there, redstone. There we go. Cable obscurator. Word of caution it is vis not visually different from the EC manipulator, but they both are very different items. This gets fixed in Industrial Craft 2, but, you know, not that hard to worry about. Now, there are two spots that I want to hide the cables. Huh. I thought it just worked by right-clicking the cables. Huh. Um... Okay, so I figured it out. <laughs> um, I can't explain it, but it appears to be some kind of memory error with the blocks not refreshing. Because, um, you see, if I click it, still nothing happens. But if I force them to refresh by changing their lighting, then they change what they look like. So... Um, I don't know quite why that is, but, uh, oh well. I'm just cycling them through some of the different textures here so you can see what they look like. They've got the default stone, but then they've got sand and other stuff, reinforced stone, and there may be more. I don't know. I'm just trying to get them back to the original textures. Uh, I think this one loop. Anyway, you get the idea. So, 
my original plan of simply using the cable obscurator to hide them isn't going to work because relays are immune to the cable obscurators. So, plan B, I'm simply going to move the cable. So it's like that there, that there. Let's see. Need to figure out where the relay is. Give me a second here. Okay, the relay is here, and it can go nine blocks before it needs to be boosted again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll put the relay here. Well, I suppose, yeah, I'll put the relay there, just to be on the safe side. So I got my relay here, like that. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the ninth block, and this is the relay. So that should work. Now I'll just seal this real quick. Oops. So, there. Perfect. Now I'm going to run back and grab my cable, not cable obscure, uh, EU reader, and double check, or er, EU manipulator, double check that I haven't messed anything up, but before I do that, I'm going to run over here, and, there it goes. Alright, cool. There. Because that was, because my tree farm kind of showed a bit of my wiring. Alright, cable obscurator is dealt with for now, so I'll just check my EU over here. Alright, does it work on relays? Yeah, that's doubling occasionally, but it shows a steady 32 pulses. Well, of course it would from there, I need to check here. Yeah, 32. Okay. Alright, so we're good. Um, let's see, check on my macerators, that's good. This is done. Good. Furnaces have looks like they've lost power. Not surprising. Oh, excuse me. Not surprising. Um, let's see. I'm just gonna pull out what they've got so far. Very good. Put this up there in the chest. And let's see, I'm going to put this all in here for the time being until I my MFEs recharge. Grab some of the glass, keep the cobblestone, put my tin up or my, my copper up there because I found a bit of copper as I was digging that new tunnel for the cable. And alright, I'm going to Put these two things back. Fix that and put that there. Oh yeah, I need to charge my battery. And then it is off to the next project. Now, when beta 1.8 comes out, I'm going to well actually sorry, let me back this up. Beta 1.8 is out as of this video. However, obviously. I haven't up actually updated to 1.8 yet. I'm still on 1.7.3, and I will be until I feel like updating, <laughs> which is when all the mods are updated, etc., etc., etc. Now, uh, when it updates, I will no longer have 1.7.3 features. I'll have 1.8 features, and my current map. Well, it looks like this. So here's my plan. My plan is to, for this map, and the map where my nether portal exits into the overworld, where my nether tower is, I'm going to fully expand the map in all directions, so that I know that I have these two maps of 1.7.3, and then I can go beyond that for 1.8. So that's my plan, and I'm actually going to take my wolf with me, or my dog, or whatever, for the trip. So, open the door here.
it's not too late. This is good. Like that. I'm going to go this way. And yeah, so we'll see what the place looks like. I, you might notice I've got the materials for a map in my inventory. My plan is to build a map because I don't actually have a map of the area where my nether portal exits. So I'll need that. And then eventually I'm going to have like a like an air base, a base really high up in the sky that um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and find a mountain in the 1.8 in the 1.8 area after I upgrade that goes all the way to the sky so I can build my tower on top of it which sounds really cool. Alright, get on. Pull out my map which I can't see in third person. There we go. Alright, so let's start with north. And go from there. Bit lag there. Probably gonna get a lot of lag on this trip because I'll have to draw in all this new area. See, I think, yeah, my uh, underwater base is right over here as well. Yeah, right over there. So I'll get that on my way back. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that's cool. The cool architecture here by the terrain generator. That is really nice. See, that's part of the reason why I'm exploring now, to see new and cool, exciting terrain, because the terrain generator drastically changes in 1.8. And, uh, okay, so that's to the edge of the map. I'm gonna try and go not very far past the edge of the map, because I don't want any past the map of past the map edge stuff to generate. Oh shoot. <laughs> um I uh want this map and the other map only to be 1.7.3. I want everything beyond that to be 1.8. Oops. Don't fall in the water. Um yeah, pretty. No, oh, pigs. Hold on, I'm going to go um test out my diamond sword. Hello, pigs. Goodbye, pigs. Alright, take this out of my hot bar. I'm back here. Oh. There we go. Oh, actually, that works. There we go. Cool looking thing over there. Alright, so I'm almost at the corner here. And then... Alright, that's the corner. So now I can start going down this way. Nice. That's ooh, iron. <laughs> Despite my goals for this trip, I'm still gonna get the iron. It's strange that there's just some above ground iron like that. Oh wow. That is really cool. Boy, if I was gonna build my underground base here, th not my underground base, my underwater base here, that would be a great entrance. There's more iron. See, this is why I came down here. Zombie? I get to kill a zombie with my sword? <gasps> a dungeon? Wow. <laughs> I will admit, I was not expecting a dungeon. That was like the last thing I was expecting. Cool. Another spawner for me then, I guess. There we go. Interesting. So it was only a uh, one chest dungeon. Hmm. I don't need uh, bones. I've or feathers or um dirt like the spawner the spawner thank you very cool very cool uh do i have any room for the mossy cobblestone yeah i think i'll drop the cobblestone and just grab the mossy really quick 
because I doubt I'll be this far out again for quite a while, and I don't want to have to feel like I should come back and grab said mossy cobblestone, because the dungeons near my spawn that I looted in, like, part three, I think it was, you know, I will get back there eventually. I just really don't care about the mossy cobblestone enough to have it taking up a spot in my inventory, and since I'm not on like a multiplayer server or something, this is all on single player, I have really no pressing need to get it, but this, I'm not going to be back here for a long time, I should get it while I'm here to avoid not being able to find it again for starters. So. And there. Looks like all of it. Interesting that it's always ever on the ground, never on, like, the walls or anything. Oop. Uranium. Great, just what I need. <laughs> One more thing to carry in my inventory. Now, I'm not going to care about that water because it could easily, easily be, um, the ocean, which I know is really nearby, so I'm just gonna ignore it. Okay. Assuming there's nothing back here, which seems like a safe bet. Yeah, seems like a safe bet. Alright. So I'm going to run back up and resume my project. Great, now it's nightfall. Oh well. Hmm. Let's put the string on my hotbar just so I... Because I really don't want to hurt my dog accidentally. Why aren't you... Oh right, because it's trying to... Put ladders. There we go. Because string is the item that trains it to be fisher dog. Okay. Oops, that's the wrong way. That's the right way. Oh, right, I was going to cut through this little gap here. Skip the reeds, because I've got a reed farm back home, which, that reminds me, I actually forgot to show that before I took off, so I'll have to get that on my way back. Or, when I get back, I'll show you my uh, reeds farm I built. This is kind of disappointing. I It's late, I can't see anything. don't have any wool on me. I don't see any sheep nearby. I suppose I could just build a little shelter and wait. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I think I'm going to. I'm just going to build a little house. And, uh, wait for day to come so that I can actually see what I'm doing okay now come on in here Good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sit. Probably shouldn't be doing, trying to do that with blocks in my hand. Okay, sit. There you go. Sit in the corner. Good. Good dog. Put that there. There. Okay. Time for a little bit of time lapse. <laughs> 